Okay. Okay, okay. So I guess what else is there to talk about besides Doom? Doom. Yes. Doom. Because as Gary G. Norton points out on a Sam Carana comment, it's the only thing worth talking about. The rest is just echo chamber variations on a theme of human aspiration and hubris. Everything else is just blah blah. Because we've never been here before. So in today's presentation, I would like to evaluate two articles which have been making the uh, rounds lately. As I get them pulled up, I'm reading straight from my laptop here. It's a balmy 80-something degrees, humid. So I want to begin with this one from Insider, but it's been published in various other mainstream outlets. The, climate, the headline reads, Climate scientist says total climate breakdown is now inevitable. It is already a different world out there. Quote, soon it will be unrecognizable to every one of us. What a headline. Can we get an applause for some honesty and truth? Finally, let's just read the bullet points. Scrolling down here, in his new book, Bill McGuire, by the way, this book is not out. I think it comes out early next month. Some various figures such as Roger Hollum and Rupert Reed have gotten early access to it, to name a few. He argues it's too late to avoid catastrophic climate change. The earth science professor says lethal heat waves and extreme weather are just the beginning. Many climate scientists, he said, are more scared about the future than they are willing to admit to the public. So he just, his new book, actually published Thursday, it's not available on Amazon yet, Hot House Earth, An Inhabitant's Guide. Bill McGuire argues that after years of ignoring warnings from scientists, it is too late to avoid the catastrophic impacts of climate change. The University College London Earth Science professor pointed to record-breaking heat waves this month, dangerous wildfires that destroyed 16 homes in East London as evidence of the rapidly changing climate. He says the weather will begin to regularly surpass current extremes despite government goals to lower carbon emissions. He says as we head further into 2022, it's already a different world out there. His perspective that severe climate change is now inevitable and irreversible is m more extreme than many scientists who believe that with lowered emissions, the most severe potential impacts can be still avoided. He calls on climate scientists' reluctance to acknowledge the futility of the climate action, climate appeasement. We've heard this before, and says it will only get worse. Instead of focusing on net zero emission goals, he says we won't reverse the current course of climate change. He argues that we need to adapt to a hot house world that lies ahead and start taking action to stop material conditions from deteriorating further. Quote, this is a call to arms, he told The Guardian. So if you feel the need to glue yourself to a motorway or blockade an oil refinery, do it. Pretty serious words. But the highlight of today's video is a publish here in Yale Climate Connections. I believe they are a subsidiary department of Yale who focuses, as the headline says, on climate connections. They're friends now, by the way. They like to slap each other. Let me, let me put him inside, because I can't focus. Okay, excuse the quick break. The headline from Yale Climate Connections is The Future of Global Catastrophic Risk Events from Climate Change. Subhead says increasing risks posed by climate change are causing rare extreme events that can kill more than 10 million people or lead to damages of 10 trillion plus, posing threats of societal collapse, a UN report finds. Again, the UN also states that we'll have a population of something like 10 billion by 2050. Where do they get these numbers from? Because in my head, the future does look something like a blend of like the road. It is cold and growing colder as the world slowly dies. No animals have survived and all the crops are long gone. Elysium. And Mad Max. Continuing with the article. Quote, four times since 1900, human civilization has suffered global ca catastrophes with extreme impacts. World War I, 40 million people were killed. 1918 influenza pandemic, 40 to 50 million people. World War II, 40 to 50 million people. And the COVID-19 pandemic, 
which costed trillions and a death toll of 14.9 million so far. And so these are the only events at the beginning of the 20th century that meet the United Nations definition of Global Catastrophic Risk, GCR. A catastrophic global and impact that kills over 10 million people or causes over 10 trillion in damage. Okay, we understand this guys, but human activity is creating greater and more dangerous risk, increasing the odds of global catastrophic risk events. And so they warned in a recent report called the Global Assessment Report on Disaster Risk Reduction that transforming and transforming governance for a reliant future and it's endorsed by you know secretary general antonio guterres is overtaxing is illustrating overtaxing of ecosystems are creating a dangerous tendency to, for the world to develop a global collapse scenario the scenario presents a world where planetary boundaries have been crossed and if gcr events have not already occurred or in the process of occurring think boe amazon die-off species loss some of these are addressed, uh, then their likely of, likelihood of doing so in the future is, quote, extreme, and total societal collapse is a possibility. So we look here at this graph or illustration they made for planetary boundaries, and I can just go through it a little bit here. The orange represents increasing risk and danger from these safe operating spaces that we operate in. Things like climate change, extinction rate, which is way outside our bounds and that's within biosphere integrity land system change deforestation novel entities like chemical pollutants plastics heavy materials biochemical flows phosphorus nitrogen ocean acidification is not quite past the planetary boundary but it's pretty much there and then air atmospheric aerosol loading hasn't surprisingly been not yet quantified even though there is numerous peer-reviewed papers on this from multiple atmospheric surveys around the world, including Japan, and stratospheric ozone depletion, and freshwater use and freshwater change. Continuing these possible catastrophic risks, uh, risk from nature, volcanic eruptions, comets and asteroids, unintended consequences, risk from hostile acts, these are pretty self-explanatory guys, nuclear war, um, nanotechnology, biotechnology. Furthermore, it goes on that to say that the five types of GCR events, increasing likelihood in warmer climate, are no surprise, drought, war, sea level rise, pandemics, and ocean current changes. It goes on to give an illustration for ocean acidification provided by NOAA. And in 2004, a punishing surprise, number seven, Harvard climate scientists Paul Epstein and James McCarthy concluded in a paper titled Assessing Climate Stability that we are already observing signs of instability within the climate system. There's a no assurance that the rate of greenhouse gas buildup will force the system to oscillate erratically and yield significant punishing surprises, i.e. Hurricane Sandy of 2012. Uh, high impact black swan events that nobody anticipated. Wally Broker once said, climate is an angry beast and we are poking at it with sticks. This commentary is provided by Jeff Masters. I'll put the link below. You can read the rest, but he's essentially saying the same thing is that we're taking back loans. You know, we got to pay back loans from the planet and uh, we're not doing so fast enough. Jeff Masters is a PhD, worked as a hurricane scientist with NOAA Hurricane Hunters from 1986 to 90, and after a near fatal flight into Category 5 Hurricane Hugo, he left the, the um, Hurricane Hunters to pursue a passion, earning a PhD in 1997 in air pollution and meteorology from the University of Michigan. He co-founded Weather Underground, and yeah, you can reach out to him if you want. The emphasis on this on this article is these boundaries that we've crossed or already crossed or about to cross, causing massive pain for civilization and you and me. Because we're in it. This is the end. You made it. Congrats. All right. Well, don't forget there's a PayPal donation link below. I appreciate your support. These are hard times. And thank all of you for watching, liking, subscribing, and staying informed about our collective existence. I'll talk to you later. See ya.